Have you heard Solomon dedicates the temple? In this lesson, we will learn about making transitions. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be a part of our Sunday school? Then subscribe. Hi, I'm Regina Dean Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in maybe Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. And today's lesson is Solomon Dedicates the Temple. Devotional reading is Romans the 8th chapter, verses 29 through 39. Background scripture is 2 Kings the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 34. Key verse, 2 Kings 19th chapter, 19th verse. Today's date is September 8, 2024. Let's start with the prayer. God of mercy, Lord of love, hear the cries of all who need you. Even when our sins have trapped us in suffering, show us mercy. Do not let us be overwhelmed by our bad decisions or those of others. As Jesus called even those who betrayed him to feed his sheep, call us into your eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lesson aims. Number one, summarize Solomon's prayer. Number two, analyze the structure and movement of Solomon's prayer at the temple dedication. And number three, write a prayer to dedicate the congregation's meeting places to the Lord. Lesson introduction. Years ago, a new preacher was preparing for a presentation in the church and wanted to use the communion table for his equipment. His wife reminded him that it was meant for communion, which he dismissed just as a fancy piece of wood. However, she pointed out that many of the congregation viewed it as sacred and reserved for specific purposes. Understanding this perspective, he decided to listen to her advice. Lesson context. In 1 Kings 8 chapter, the newly constructed temple in Jerusalem was dedicated. The temple took seven years to build, starting in 966 BC and finishing in 959 BC, marking a significant change for the Israelites as they moved from a portable tabernacle to a permanent place of worship. King Solomon led the dedication ceremony and offered a lengthy prayer that is one of the longest in the Bible. Today's lesson focuses on part of that prayer and highlights its organized structure. Lesson scriptures. 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, verses 22 through 24 then it skips to verses 37 through 39. Then it skips to verse 46. And then it goes to verse 48 through verse 58. Verse 22. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. Solomon's standing position during prayer is typical in ancient Near Eastern art. Though kneeling and prostration was also valid forms, by the end of his prayer, he shifts from standing to kneeling. His gesture of raising his hand toward heaven signifies sincerity and reverence, highlighting God's transcendence over creation. Solomon prays not only for himself, but on behalf of all Israel, particularly those present for the temple's dedication emphasizing their collective relationship with God. Verse 23, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepeth covenant and mercy with all thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. The two verses resembles Second Chronicles, the sixth chapter, verses 14 through 15 and highlight God's uniqueness, which is a common theme in the Bible. The Lord God of Israel has no equals as is committed to his covenant out of merciful love, as noted in Deuteronomy 7, chapter verses 9 and verse 12. While the Israelites must follow God's commandments, their bond with him is rooted 
in his promise rather than human effort. The people are encouraged to embrace the law of Moses with joy and dedication as mere routine obedience isn't sustainable. Verse 24, who hath kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him, thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hath fulfilled it with thy hand, as it is this day. God's promise to David that his descendants would construct the temple had been fulfilled, showing his faithfulness, even though both kingship and the temple faced destruction. God's plan for Israel continued. These events serve to highlight deeper spiritual truths about his eternal kingship and temple. While God may fulfill his promises in different ways, they always stand firm. The lesson changes to verse 37. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or even there be caterpillar, if their enemy besieged them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be. The Old Testament often describes disasters that can strike God's people as a sword. Famine, pestilence. See 1 Chronicles 12th chapter verses 11 through 12 and Jeremiah the 14th chapter verse 12. These categories refer to harm from enemies, poor harvest and disease crop destruction by blight, mildew, locusts, and caterpillars lead to famine. See Psalms 78th chapter, verse 46, Amos 4th chapter, verse 9, and Joel chapter 1, verse 4. These warnings about disasters are detailed in Deuteronomy 28th chapter, verses 15 through 68. Verse 38, What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward this house. Solomon asked God to hear the prayers of those in the temple or thinking about it. The King James Version uses specific words while the Septuagint omits some details. The prayer emphasizes that Gentiles can pray, but mainly calls on Israelites who have strayed from God to pray both alone and together. During World War II, the Bengal famine caused millions to starve as resources were redirected for the war, and Gandhi promoted self-reliance, sparking discussion. In tough times, do you turn to the government for support, rely on yourself, or seek guidance from God? Verse 39, Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only knowest the heart of all the children of men. It's important for people to understand that their own thoughts and feelings similar to how God understands them. While striving for this is admirable, it's ultimately attainable since God knows us better than we know ourselves. When praying, God responds based on our true intentions and needs. However, those who refuse to change their ways cannot offer sincere prayer as they are only seeking relief from immediate problems. And the lesson changes to verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away, captives into the land of the enemy far or near. The prayer acknowledges that the people might sin so severely that they could lose their covenant and be taken from their promised land, which eventually happened. However, it also looks beyond the punishment outlined in Deuteronomy to the hope of restoration through God's mercy. The bond between Israel and God is rooted in divine love rather than human actions. Therefore, the prayer seeks renewal for the people despite their failures, recognizing that while God punishes sin, he also offers forgiveness and mercy. Verse 48, And so return unto thee with all thy heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land. 
which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built in thy name. Solomon's prayers suggest that suffering prompts people to reflect on their lives and seek change. It also implies that God listens to their repentance, even from a foreign land, showing his universal presence and concern for those wanting redemption. The mention of praying toward the Jerusalem temple may be one of the earliest references of this practice, which continued with Daniel in Babylon. This highlights how one's posture in prayer can reveal their true intentions, as seen in Ezekiel's vision of worshipers facing away from the temple. Verse 49, Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thou dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Hearing is different from truly listening, as noted in Ezekiel 33rd chapter, verses 4 through 5. This prayer reflects both aspects, asking God to support their mission, which is the listening part. God assigns this mission to the Israelites and it defines their nation. Deuteronomy 7th chapter and 6th verse. Ultimately, the prayer seeks for God's will to be accomplished through Israel's purpose. And he definitely wants that too. Verse 50a. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee. God does not find joy in our pain, even when it may seem deserved. Spiritual growth can lead to discomfort as we work to change negative habits, but God and compassionate people still care for us during difficult times. It's important to remember that not all suffering is earned. In South Africa, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission helped avoid violence after apartheid by promoting forgiveness among victims and offenders alike. Write your answers to the questions in the comments below. Number one, what promises from God's scriptures has he kept? Two, what are some disasters or crises that people today worry about and seek God's support to endure? And three, how do you know that God has pardoned your wrongdoings? Conclusion. In the Bible, one striking aspect of prayer is found in Solomon's dedication of the temple, where he asks for forgiveness for sin, not just committed. This prayer reflects Israel's entire history, from the exodus to their eventual exile. It acknowledges humanity's flaws and the ongoing issues like idolatry and oppression that have persisted since ancient times. Rather than being a final farewell, Israel's story serves as both a cautionary tale and an invitation to pursue a better life. And I thought to remember, sin is real, but so is God's mercy. Now, I have something exciting that I think will be a game changer for your Sunday school preparation. Imagine having all your lesson slides ready to go each week without spending hours preparing them. I put together a comprehensive slide deck for our Sunday school lesson, and it's available for just $10 a month. That's less than the cost of a few cups of tea. These slides are designed to align perfectly with our lessons, so you won't have to worry about creating anything from scratch. Just download, review, and you're ready to teach. Think of all the times you'll save, time that you can spend deepening your understanding of the material or even just enjoying a peaceful Saturday evening. Simply email me at rdrsclasses at gmail.com. And if you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up, share this lesson, get into a Bible study group in person or online, get your shots, stay six feet apart, wear your mask, love each other, pray for each other, and I will see you all next week.